damage. Uh, water uh, will will um, stretch and will will expand molecules and will cause damage. So what I want to do is talk about it. There's three different categories of water and four different classes of water. Water is such a big deal. There's actually a, um, a, uh, a class uh, that all of our adjusters take. It's uh, basically a two or three day class just on water, just on understanding what water, uh, what water does and how to fix uh, damaged areas in water. So there's classes and categories. Uh, the easiest thing to understand are the categories of water. And that's clean water. That's what we drink. That's what comes out of our water faucet is clean water. Gray water is water that has been, has had some kind of chemical uh, modification to it, like maybe a soap or something like that. And it's not um, necessarily, um, uh, it's not necessarily dangerous, but it's not good. It's not something you would drink. Black water is dangerous water. So like toilet water, sewage, um, th those are good examples of black water. Then you have the different classes of water. Slow evaporation, fast evaporation, the fastest, and then specialty drying situations. Uh, and we'll talk about all of these in the next couple of slides. So the first thing that always needs to be identified is where did the water come from? What caused the damage? So like in the broken copper pipe, you know that that's clean water that, that at least is how it starts is clean water. If it came from a, um, a, a thunderstorm or something like that, and it got picked up off of the ocean, it might be salt water, it might be, it might be clean water, but you don't, you know, again, you have to find out. But the different types of water will cause significant differences in the cost of repair. Dirty water is very difficult to repair or to clean. And uh, the things that it affects um, don't typically get repaired, they get replaced. So here's some examples. So what, co what caused this damage here on the ceiling? What do you think caused the damage there? What are some potential causes for this damage? Um, and this is the interactive part of the class, so. <laughs> maybe a, a, a bathtub or a toilet overflow. Great, yep. So you might have a bathroom where water escaped the plumbing system in the bathroom. Good. Anybody else? Roof leak. Uh, your roof. A roof leak. So we might be missing some shingles or something like that. And, and water got in through the roof and damaged the ceiling. What else? Yes, there are other things that could cause this damage. A pipe? Toilet. A pipe? Uh, yep, it could be a pipe. Let's say it's a pipe that wasn't part of the, um, the bathroom, but a pipe that was just uh, going over that, over that ceiling. Yep, that could be causing it. What else? Accidental discharge of water from a kitchen sink or a washer. Yep, so it could be from a kitchen as well. What else? Holes in the ceiling can cause a leak in the uh, ceiling. What's that? Holes in the ceiling can cause a leak in the ceiling from the rain. Okay. Yep. So it could again, it could be uh, damage from the roof, uh, which allowed rain to get in. What else? Maybe a leak. Come on, think outside the box, guys. Think outside the box. Maybe an infestation or something like termites. I don't know if like. Yeah, could be. That's that's way outside the box. Yep. Yes. Way out yep. That's good job. <laughs> Good job. What else? Air conditioner. Good. That's a good one. Air conditioning could be condensation on the pipes of the air conditioning system. Good job. What else? First what pipe. about just a large leak that hasn't been tended to and it was sitting for a while? Like, like a spill, not a leak, but a spill. Oh, okay. Now, Rose, you're into something. How about a spill? Maybe it was an aquarium up there. Okay. 
maybe an aquarium and we lost water from the aquarium and that that caused damage that's a spill good job what else wet carpet what was that on the, on the ceiling something wet uh, carpet or for longer time something will be there so it's going on the roof okay well maybe it was carpet so maybe we had a dog that uh, uh, didn't get outside fast enough yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe maybe a dog uh, didn't get outside fast enough and peed on the floor. Okay. That could that could be it too. Anything else? I live in an old house and I have the old radiators and sometimes the, uh, the little yeah, they leak cuz I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> yep. And it doesn't even have to be a leak. It just could mean a, a like we have steam heat in our home and mm -hmm, that exactly. steam often the pressure gets too high and the the radiators will release the water. So it could mean a release of radiator water. Very good. You see there's a lot of different ways that water can get into the house. Uh you're looking at the the sink. Um you know that's what are the different ways under the sink? What are the different things that could cause um, the water to, to be under the sink? A loose pipe. A loose, uh, yeah, a loose fitting on a pipe. Good, what else? Get off. Get off that. Backup. What's that? A drain backup. Drain backup, excellent. Yep, what else? Mm. Abby, I couldn't hear you. A broken pipe. Can you put it into the chat? Oh, a broken pipe. Yep. A hole that in could, the pipe. A hole in the pipe. Yes. Okay, that's a broken pipe. Yep. Uh, the food crusher. Uh, yes. Yes. It could mean the the um the uh, oh, what do you call it? The grinder. Grinder or yeah. Garbage disposal. Yeah, garbage Thank disposal. you. Yeah. How about ice damming? What kind of damage is ice damming going to do to a house? Robert your gutters ex personal experience. Your gutters can crack. Gutters can crack. What else? Um, it weighs no. down your. There, do you do you realize that why I'm doing this? Why I'm asking all these questions? You guys are thinking of things that you hadn't probably thought of before, but this is the way you need to think as a public adjuster. When you see damage, like the damage that roof leak uh, in the right-hand picture there, your first question shouldn't be, wow, I wonder if that's a good claim. The first question should be, I wonder what caused that. Okay. That should be always your first question. I wonder what caused that. Because once you have that answered, you'll know whether it's a claim or not. Okay. So the right-hand picture, we, it's similar to the other one, except for a little bit more exaggerated. What Now, let me ask in that picture on the right, what is damaged in that picture? The ceiling. The ceiling? What's the damage on the ceiling? What would need to be done on the ceiling? Like the plaster or whatever that is. Yep. So you're going to have to replace the plaster. What else? Paint. Paint. What else? Maybe insulation. If it got maybe, wet. Uh, yep. My, maybe it's a top room. So maybe there's insulation. What else? Any electrical. Uh, yeah, you have a light there, in? right? You have a light there. So now you've got to get an electrician in and make sure that the wires didn't get corroded or shorted, right? What else? Mm. Whatever that um, vent is, air conditioning or the central. You have a vent whatever. there. So now you have HVAC issues that might be occurring. You might have water condensation inside the HVAC uh, pipes. They may have gotten corroded. Um, in the wall. What's awesome. that? Good question. You know, are other parts of the house uh, affected because this room was so heavily affected? What else in this room? 
the flooring yeah. would definitely probably collapse if it gets wet too, probably too much. I don't know. Yeah. And so the- we can't see the flooring, but uh, uh, with that kind of damage on the ceiling, you've got to believe that if it's a carpeted room, the carpet's going to have to be replaced. If it's a, a wooden room, that the wood probably got decompressed and it probably needs replacement as well. What else do we have in this room? Sheet rock and molding. The molding uh, got wet, right? And and can you guys see the, the water damage on the right-hand wall? Yes, yeah, the crack. You uh-huh. see how the paint is kind of dripping? Or, mm. or, or uh, you see how that's, that's so those are water everything. pockets. What's happened there is the water has actually separated the paint from the wall. Okay that paint has actually been separated from the wall and that entire wall needs to be replaced and the entire room needs to be repainted. But yeah, there's a, I, I, we didn't even talk about vandalism, but vandalism could have been an issue too. Um, I did a claim with a faulty sprinkler system in a, a pharmaceutical company, uh, faulty plumbing, all of these things. It, The big thing is you've got to ask the question, how did this happen? So class one water damaged floor. Category one water is what? What have we learned so far about category one water? Or class one, I'm sorry, not uh, class one water. Slow evaporation. Slow evaporation. It's category one, so it's clean water. So on this floor, it's damaged enough that its replacement is required, all right? And the reason for that is that hardwood floors can't handle this kind of decompression. This kind of decompression, you cannot, because they're tongue and groove, okay, the tongue has to be able to sit inside that groove of the wood. And when it's expanded like this, when you sand it down, you're going to lose the groove. So the tongue has no place to go. It's kind of like being in Robert's mouth, right? The tongue has no place to go. Okay. So that's why he wags his tongue so much. (laughs) Hi, Robert. (laughs) <laughs> All right, class two water damaged rooms. Remember, what is class two? Do you remember? Fast, class two is fast evaporation. So, water affecting all of the carpet and the pad. This is going to be fast evaporating. Now, it's interesting when you have fast evaporating water, you have to be careful that you don't suck all that water out too quickly. You've got to dry the room in a very even and mannered way. Otherwise, and this is going to sound crazy, if you try to dry this room too fast, you have the chance of actually collapsing the walls because the water is going to come out of those walls so fast, it's going to be drawn to the heat. It'll actually collapse the walls. So there's a real science in drying a room. And that's why we always have professionals. Whenever there's a water in a room, you want to have a professional take it out. Because if you take it out too quickly, you could cause additional damage to the room. But all the vital building materials here have been damaged because of the way this water came in. Class three is the fastest. That means that the entire room has been saturated. Normally with a class two, you've got two surfaces. In this case, you've got the walls perhaps and the floor. In class three, you've got the ceiling, the walls and the floor that have been damaged. The entire room has been saturated. And here you have a real careful Uh, and very methodical way that needs to be used in drying and preserving this room. Class four, 
this is specialty drying. So what's the issue with the cement floor and it getting wet? Does anybody know? It can cause cracks maybe into the concrete. Okay. Yep. If you, if you over dry it, uh, the cement will become brittle. Cement carries a significant amount of water in it. Like 20%. So you cannot just dry cement. It takes a very long time to, to dry out cement to the right le level. And it holds that water for a very, very long time. So you do have to do something with it. Otherwise, that water will wick up the walls. You see how this wall has two different colors to it? What's happened is the water that's on the floor is actually going up the wall like a, a, a candle wick. You know how uh, um, the oils from the wax will go up the wick of a candle and then will burn at the end of the candle? The same thing holds true with water. Water will wick up the wall. And that's why you'll see when a, um, a, uh, a mitigation company comes in to work on, what, on, damaged, um, on a damaged room, that oftentimes they'll cut the first six or 12 inches of the wall. And they do that to prevent the wall from wicking further. In this case, they're going to actually have to cut the first three feet or four feet of wall because it's already wicked up that far. And because it's wicked up that far, it has the potential of having damaged the studs in the wall as well because it's gotten up so far. Clean water, again, another uh, uh, your, uh, source of loss. Uh, here, the, the sink has overflowed. That's clean water that's in the sink, but now it's gone out of the sink. And what starts off as clean water, once it starts dealing with different, um, different building materials, it will slowly be, become gray water and ultimately it'll turn into black water. So here's gray water. It contains some contamination. So the suds uh, contain some soap and that's a contaminant uh, contamination and so anything that it touches has to be cleaned uh have specialty cleaning on it category one water simply needs to be dried okay the uh, the items don't typically need to be cleaned category two water which is where you end up starting to get contaminated water this is where cleaning is required. Category three water, everything needs to be replaced. You cannot clean it. So for example, you have a toilet overflow or a, a toilet backup. What happens with the tiles? Typically, a homeowner is simply going to dry up the floor, clean it with Lysol and call it a day. However, that floor has not been cleaned. Why? Because you still have biologicals that are in the grout in between the tiles on that floor. Okay, so the floor is still not clean. The only way you can truly clean that floor and get all the biologicals out is to actually replace the floor. So black water, when you have toilet water, sewage water, water that has been through two or three building materials is considered black water as well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if you see pink tiles, uh, especially with the subway tiles, the ones that are like rectangles, 
most likely uh, that came out of the 1970s. So you may have a, a, a real issue there because it cannot be repaired and you cannot replace those items. They have to, well, you cannot uh, replace with like, right? Because you cannot put asbestos into a house. So the only way to fix that bathroom is to actually replace all of the tile in that bathroom. Anytime there is active presence of water in the house, uh, you need to have emergency uh, services uh, take care of that water. The reason for that is that if you try to do it yourself, you may do it too quickly or you may do it too slowly <laughs> or you may not do it completely. You need a professional to do it properly so that the house can be brought back to pre-loss condition. So we have relationships with several mitigation companies. Uh, CPW, is that what it is? Yeah, that's what they're called. CPW is CPR. Thank you. I knew that didn't sound right. CPR is one of those. Uh, we've got a couple of other ones. But our relationship with them is if we bring them in to one of our clients, they will pay us 10% of whatever the cost of the mitigation is. So you can actually get a, a, a finder's fee, if you will, for using these mitigation companies. The other benefit of using them is that they're not going to do too much work. One of the big issues with a mitigation company is they try to get everything they can out of the claim, oftentimes taking money out of the, out of the uh, client's pocket that really didn't have to go. When you work with one of our mitigation companies, they know what the insurance company is gonna pay for, they know what we're gonna ask for, and they do nothing more. Any questions about any of this? So the big thing here is that we're always educating. You want to explain to the client why a mitigation company is required if you see water damage. You want to inspect it. Make sure that you're not calling in a mitigation company if it's not required. And one of the things that you can do is you can always call somebody like CPR or other ones that are in your area and ask them to uh, help you inspect to identify whether or not their services are required. And they'll assist you. And we're assisting the client by doing that. Discuss these things with your adjuster that you work with. Uh, and that may be me. Uh, you know, in some areas, I'm the adjuster as well. But the adjuster can assign a vendor and you'll get paid and the adjuster will get paid. And then you wanna follow up and make sure that the client is being treated properly and that the claim is moving forward properly. So when we talk about water, we're talking about seven different types of water, clean gray and black. And then we have a different a class that could be associated with each one of those categories. So you're looking at four times, you're looking at 12 combinations of water damage that could occur. Hey, Paul, I have a question. Sure. I had a situation with a uh, client in Merlin. He had already filed a claim with his insurance company and he had, um, um, I guess, a mitigation company come out and clean up the mess. So when we got involved, our field adjuster, while he was there, the same scenario happened again with the water, uh, accidental discharge of water. So we, we use a different mitigation company. Okay. But not once, not twice, but three times the same situation occurred with him. And our field adjuster, um, the question is whether or not every time they have the situation, should they contact the mitigation company 
or get somebody else to clean up the mess. So every time they should contact the mitigation company, but the work will be different each time because after the first time, you'll already have the walls cut up. So the second time a mitigation company goes in, it's going to be a, a smaller job. Third time, same thing. It's going to be smaller jobs. But yeah, if there's water in there, the problem is getting the water out. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you don't have, uh, if it's not a finished basement, then maybe the homeowner can do it on their own, uh, especially if it's, you know, clean water. But it if you're talking, property. what about when it's rental property? You have tenants in there. Uh, depends. Again, is the tenant in the basement? Yes. Then I'd have mitigation company in. Okay. For two reasons. One, uh, to get the work done and to make sure that it's done right. Mm -hmm. Two, because I don't want my client making a claim about mold three months from now and having a lawsuit. Okay. So I want to do, I want a mitigation company in there for the damage, but also to prevent litigation. Does that make sense? Yes. Anybody else? Hey, Paul, just following up on that question. You hear me? Sure. Okay. She, she, Renee mentioned like about the same situation, like three times. Wouldn't that trigger like a, the, the special investigative team for having like the same event? That depends on, on what was the event, right? I mean, it depends on if uh, the homeowner shows that they made good attempts to mitigate the damage and it still occurred anyways. Okay, uh, how, about, how about preventing the damage? That's what mitigation is. Okay. Um, I was thinking like the, the mitigation team was like the cleanup after. Let's say you have an accidental discharge of water. Just putting a scenario out there. And that accidental discharge of water is caused by using, um, what's it? It's PEX pipe. I think that pipe that just breaks after a while. Yeah. After the second break, wouldn't it be like, wouldn't the owners be on the homeowner to have those pipes replaced? The insurance company is not, uh, does not worry about what hasn't broken. Oh, okay. Okay. So if it just keeps breaking, they just keep fixing? They just keep fixing. It's like if you have seven dead trees in your yard and one dead tree r falls over and breaks your fence. Okay. Um, and then another one falls over and damages your, um, your garage. You know that that third one, because of where it is, you know it's going to hit the house. Is the insurance company going to pay to have that other tree removed so that it doesn't damage your house? No, but if, if you got trees like that and they each keep falling, does the homeowner have a right to check those trees out? Oh, the homeowner can pay for it. Absolutely. And the insurance company may say, listen, um, your home is under an undue risk and we're not going to insure your home unless you have that tree removed. Okay. Right. So like I had a client who had a barn that was just about falling over and um, we didn't file a claim uh, with uh, with that client because we were concerned that the insurance company would see the barn and would uh, discontinue her insurance. So instead of filing the claim, we just uh, we talked to her about the barn and about you know, the fact that she needed to find some people to tear it down for her because it was going to become a problem. Okay. okay. So yeah, the insurance company only works with physical damage. So if you don't have the physical damage, for example, do they, 
does the insurance company care that you have asbestos tiles on the floor? Nope. They only care if one has been damaged. Right? Now you have physical damage. Now they're concerned about it. Now they'll pay for the correct mitigation of that problem. If you have lead paint uh, in your house, is, does the insurance company care? Not until it chips, no. not until it chips or water has damaged it. And now they have, now you're having to repaint that sill. And because it's lead, you have to repaint the entire room to get rid of the lead paint. Okay. So they only worry about these things once they have to, when it comes time to make the repairs. They're not going to worry about it up front. Okay, thanks. Seems weird though, doesn't it? But that's the way they work. Anybody else? All right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, let's see here. Want to uh, try to get another presentation up. But all of your faces are hiding it. There it is. No, I want to just uh, go through quickly what um, what uh, Steve went through to our uh, Dr. Mike went through today. <clears throat> 